Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Inspiration for Today, Coronavirus Edition. So I'm out here outside on my patio so as to keep proper distance from everyone. We'll see how this goes. We're going to try something different this week. Uh, it's going to be you and I, and we want to spend some time together with the Lord. The Lord is with us in both places where you are and where I am. So here's what we're going to do. Get your Bible. Do you have a Bible nearby? Because I was thinking about this. Uh, a couple of years ago, we went to the World Golf Hall of Fame. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a Hall of Fame. Uh, I know that the pro football one is in Canton, Ohio. I know that the baseball one is in Cooperstown, New York. And so, oh, and, and uh, the, Hall, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is in Cleveland. Well, did you know that the golf one is in just south of Jacksonville, Florida? And it's really a neat thing. For those of you who play golf, that's the place where after you go through the museum, then you come out and they have made a replica of the 17th Island Green from the Players' Championship. And if you pay for admission to the go walk through the Hall of Fame, then you get two balls and two chances at hitting the Island Green, just like on TV and, and the pros. Well, when we went through it, and because Diane didn't doesn't really play golf anymore. Uh, so I, I actually had four chances <laughs> at making that island green. You know how many times I hit it? Yeah, I'm afraid you did. Zero. Uh, I put four balls in the water. Anyway, that's my experience at a Hall of Fame. But all of us have a, well, in our Bible, God has a chapter where it's kind of like his Hall of Fame. Those people that through expressing their faith so well, they're listed in God's word. And so I thought it would be interesting if for, at least for this week, let's spend some time and what we'll do is we will read the Hall of Fame but it's really, he calls it the Hall of Faith. And that's because the people that are in this are in it because they expressed such great faith. In fact, so let's just get your Bible. I'm going to start reading it at, at Hebrews chapter 11. That's where it is in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. And I think this is going to be interesting because what we're going to do is we'll read about somebody and then we'll go back and we'll see uh, what the Old Testament has to say about them. And so we're going to learn not only about those people that God is so pleased with, but also what they did to, to, to I, I don't like the word earn because it really is more a function of expressing expressing their faith. So let's, let's get going. Uh, in fact, Hebrews 11, it says, now faith is being, this is what faith is. It's a def definition. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's faith. This is what the ancients were commended for, it says. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In other words, the first step of faith is just to know that God created everything. And of course, that was Adam and Eve. And then Adam and Eve had two children, at least at first. And then they had other children too. But verse 4, Hebrews 11 says, By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. And of course, he does because we're reading about Cain right now. So what did Cain do? And what? How, it's such an interesting passage because 
as as you know, the very first children were Cain and Abel. Now, <laughs> in fact, it says Adam lay with. Okay, now I'm going to turn back to the Old Testament to see, to read about Cain and Abel there. Chapter 4 of Genesis at verse 1. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And then later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the flock of his firstborn. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but Cain, on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. And you know the rest of the story. Abel went on to kill Cain. And it's so interesting. In fact, well, at verse 8, let's just read what the Bible says. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Wow. What a start to the Bible. Isn't that interesting? The Bible is so honest that even from the beginning, mankind let the Lord down. But Abel didn't. Why? What was the difference between those two offerings? Well, the difference was that one must have been given out of faith. And the other one, Cain's, was given out of just the need to do it. In other words, he was just fulfilling like the law. He just doing it. But uh, when I read, Cain was asked by, why are you so angry? If you don't do what's right, you'll not be, will you not be accepted? Well, in other words, Cain didn't bring an offering. He didn't give to the Lord. He didn't worship the Lord in faith, out of faith. That's going to be our lesson for the day. It's not just because we do good things, but the motivation. God, the Bible says God looks on the heart, and he sees our heart. And uh, in this case, evidently, it was that Abel... He was able, he was able, wasn't he? Abel was able to give of an offering and be happy about it. The Bible also says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. When we give to the Lord, he wants us to, to give out of excitement, to give back to him a little that he has given to us. And even when we serve people, I'm convinced that we're to serve out of love for the Lord and for that person. Well, it's quite a lesson. By the way, when I did go through that Golf Hall of Fame, many of the people in there that are listed as great golfers, they also were followers of Christ. And I am convinced that that really helped them in their golf game, just in the same way that faith in Christ helps us in our daily life. Can you say that? That today, how's your faith? We're in the midst of this coronavirus epidemic and uh, we're all doing things like staying home much more than we used to. Well, that means that our life is different. And we don't, we're living at a time where we don't honestly know exactly what the future is going to hold. But do we ever? Do we ever? The one thing that I do know is that the Lord holds the future in his hand. And that's good enough for me. How about for you? Hey, we've got to end now because our time is basically up. But I encourage you, take the next minute to pray. When the show ends, take a minute to pray. And if you've never put your faith in Christ and invited him in your life, do that. If not, just give him your day and Lord, and, and say, Lord, into your hands I commit my life. He'll take good care of you. He really will.